All right, so we're here now to talk about the install or the correct way to install your dial line onto your specific machine. All right, you've got your dial line, and uh, one of the most important things uh, for long life of the diamond and absolute perfect performance is the installation of the diamond. When you get your dial line from the AccuStream factory, you're going to have a basic threaded cap. Um, all this does is ensure that no debris, uh, the precision cavity that we have inside has no dirt or grime inside of it. So simply at this point, in a clean environment again, can't stress that enough, you're going to take that cap off and toss it aside. And at this point, simply inspect down inside the cavity, make sure um, that there's no debris. This one looks perfect. All the diamonds are shipped in a plastic container. Um, it's going to have a lot number. Uh, for our internal tracking and it's also going to have the size ensuring that your size stated here is the same as what you have ordered. Uh, when you open up the uh, cap it's going to have a, uh, a warning or a suggestion, not a suggestion but a warning basically saying um, make sure that you put the red side up. Once we look at the diamond you'll see there will be a red dot that is signifying what side needs to stay up uh, or which the top side shows the diamond. On the side of every diamond, you're also going to have a laser mark size. Again, noticing that the size that's on the side is what you've ordered. I find it easiest to put the diamond upside down on my finger, hold the cutting head at a slight angle, and gently get it into that precision cavity. It is a real nice tight fit, ensuring perfect angle or uh, ensuring perfect alignment, excuse me. Again, showing the red dot facing up. Alright, real quickly we're going to discuss the two different style adapters that AccuStream offers. Um, and these um, options are not available in all uh, the adapters that we offer for the uh, dial line. But the ones I'm showing here are for the Jet Edge style equipment, uh, more popularly in the AccuStream on-off valves. And what we have is a standard dial line adapter here, which will connect to an AccuStream valve on the top and has the standard uh, thread on the bottom, which will get you into any dial line. Uh, what we've tried to do is move to an option that gives you rotatability uh, with the standard adapter. When you thread everything together, where that abrasive inlet ends up is where it ends up, which uh, can be problematic for some pieces of equipment. So the new option. Uh, that is offered to you uh, has a gland and a nut approach where you can thread on uh, the, the, uh, the nut here. It is a left-handed thread, okay, and you put it on just like you would uh, for your hypersure tubing. Connect to your cutting head. Uh, if you don't like where your abrasive uh, inlet has ended up, simply rotate the nut, changing the uh, the uh, thread connection depth um, which will then ultimately change where your abrasive inlet connection comes in. Alright, when installing uh, your dial line to your specific machine, um, all of the dial line adapters with the exception of one, uh, which is the OMAX style tilt adapter, are meant to install the same way your standard down tube would or your adapter would for any machine. And what is meant by that is you are going to have a, um, they're going to thread into your valve body, you're going to use your factory or AccuStream aftermarket part uh, needle and seat or seat on your adapter, thread it into your on off valve body the same way you would with any down tube from any other manufacturer, okay? Uh, where the tilt adapter would um, adapt the same as your OMAX uh, style, okay? So at this point, uh, follow your procedure for the needle and seat as you would again, okay? At which point when we need to get to the south end of the adapter to connect to our dial line, the one thing that we want to do is gather blue goop and install a little bit of blue goop on that adapter, which I'm going to do here real quick. Use a little brush with a little bit of blue goop already on there from a clean source. Uh, paint just ever such a fil thin film coat. And what you want to do is also put it on your threads, apply that a little more liberally, 
Again, anywhere you have a metal to metal seat or a metal to metal is going to touch or the stainlesses will, you want to apply your blue goo. For this point, I'm not going to install it to keep things clean, but at which point you would simply thread it on. And at which point we tell people um, tighten to seal. Okay, we do have a flat to flat surface in here, uh, which requires a little bit more torquing than maybe some people are used to, but again, uh, tight, tighten to seal. Right, we're going to start with the simple uh, installing a nozzle into the dial line cutting head. Shown here are going to be the three um, nozzle nuts that we talked about, all of which are going to install the exact same way. We're all going to come with a collet, uh, and we got our cutting head here. Shown is going to be a 281 with uh, the standard nut, standard brace of inlet. The collet is going to have a tapered side and kind of a fat side. The fat side always faces up towards the cutting head as with any collet. So we're simply going to push that up onto the cutting head. At this point, the head may be on your machine. For this demonstration, it won't be. You're going to want to push that nozzle into the head, making sure that it's pushed up all the way against the stop, at which point you're going to push the collet um, all the way up against the head. At that point, you can kind of let loose, put the nozzle nut on, at this point, ensuring that everything is being held in, tighten the nut, and simply at this point, hand tighten as hard as you can. Please don't do a wrench. And quite frankly, that's all you need to hold the nozzle in against any pressure. All die lines are going to come with a thicker O-ring. Um, simply put, you can see there's going to be a gap here between the cutting head and the nozzle nut. What we're going to do is simply put that O-ring over that groove and all it does is prevent abrasive and any debris that's around the head from getting in and gumming up the threads. Alright, at this point all you need to do is follow your standard procedures to put your cutting head back on your machine.